So as I said, you start with the Townsend process, but what happens is a large local electric field enhancement happens at some bit, some point in the, within the electrode gap distance. And at that point, at the ion space charge, because there is a lot of space charge, the electric field is largely enhanced only locally. As a result, this field may be high enough for photoionization to happen in the gas ahead of the avalanche. So the field is enhanced maximum, mostly in the region which is just ahead of the Townsend's avalanche. So the Townsend mechanism is progressing towards the other electrode. And when it reaches some distance ahead of the avalanche, there is a local field enhancement. And as a result, photoionization happens. When photoionization happens, ions will be created. Photons will also be released. Photons are packets of energy and they can travel within the gas much faster than even electrons can. So photoionization of the gas ahead of the avalanche happens. This is a secondary process. And as a result, photons are, are being released into the gas. Wherever photons are released into the gas, they quickly travel to other parts of the gas which are not connected to the original avalanche and they cause small avalanches. So as you see, photons are being released from the space charge column in all directions, so firstly from here, and then the field enhancement may be high enough in other regions of the uh, charge column as well, and photons are uh, released. These photons will cause secondary ionization, secondary avalanches all through the gap. And as a result, and in the meantime, the main column keeps moving because the field enhancement is highest ahead of the avalanche. The main, so main column quickly moves ahead towards the other electrode due to photoionization. So now we no longer need these primary electrons to bridge the entire gap distance. They just need to have come to a sufficient distance so that a sufficient amount of local field enhancement happens. Sufficient amount of photoionization happens. When photoionization happens, these photons quickly travel around the gas and to the other electrode, causing ionization of the remaining gas. And we soon have a situation where the ions have, electrons have reached the other electrode, and all these small avalanches which have been created by the photons may now link up together to produce one conducting channel bridging the positive and the negative electrode. So here I start with the Townsend's mechanism, but I do not need the Townsend mechanism to complete. The whole process needs a much smaller time because as soon as I have sufficient photons, the photons can travel very quickly at the speed of light to the other electrodes to enter to the uh, throughout the gap and cause collisions and ionization throughout the gap so that you land up with a situation where you have first zigzag channels, zigzag individual discrete channels of uh, ionization and these ionizing channels will all connect together and create one single channel. But this channel is therefore of a zigzag nature. And as I said, that explains the two things that we were puzzled by. We do not have to wait for the primary electrons to reach the cathode and come back to the anode. The photons can do this much faster. So shorter breakdown happening at much shorter time, times than predicted by the Townsend mechanism can be explained by the streamer theory. Also, the zigzag nature of the discharge can also be explained by the streamer theory. So what do I need? I need a critical number of electrons. So I start with the Townsend mechanism. As the Townsend mechanism progresses, I need to have a critical number of electrons such that this avalanche can now transform into a streamer. These uh, avalanches, these discharges that are created due to the photoionization are called streamers. The critical number of electrons is given by this relationship. Integration alpha dot dx, 0 to d, 0 to d being the gap distance, must be equal to a critical number, which is 10 to the power 8. So we need at least 10 to the power 8 electrons at the head of the avalanche so that we have enough space charge modification, enough space charge accumulation, such that the local electric field will be enhanced. And the local field enhancement will cause photoionization and the Townsend mechanism will now give over to the streamer mechanism. In the streamer mechanism, we have the development of streamers. This is a picture I have taken from um, 
Cooper's book, which shows cloud chamber photographs. You have uh, optical images of the streamers progressing. So you see initially you have discrete streamers and then the streamers kind of start linking up and ultimately at breakdown, you have almost a total plasma channel connecting the two electrodes. So this is how Townsend's mechanism can give over to the much more disastrous uh, streamer mechanism, which can cause the breakdown to happen faster. Uh, these are all, we have to remember, these are all breakdown mechanisms that explain the dielectric breakdown when a uniform electric field is applied. In terms of the uniform electric field, there is one more law, one more concept which is very important, and that is the Pasteur law. The Pasteur law tells me that for a particular gas, the breakdown voltage is a unique function of the product of pressure and gap length. So let's say you have a gap distance. Let us say that the gap length is fixed. Then for a particular value of the pressure for a given gas, you will have a minimum value of the breakdown voltage. So, so you apply voltage and you wait to see when breakdown happens and you call that the breakdown voltage that breakdown voltage will change with the pressure in the gas for the moment for uh, simplicity i'm keep keeping the distance fixed i'm only varying p and if i change for every gas so i have here helium neon argon hydrogen nitrogen the values will be different for the different gases, but for every gas, for a fixed distance, there is a particular value of the pressure, gas pressure, for which the breakdown voltage is minimum. If you increase the pressure or decrease the pressure from this minimum value, you will need a higher voltage for breakdown to happen. How do I explain this? Look at this figure. Let's say I am. this is the red curve, which is pertaining to argon. So I have a minimum value of the VB at which uh, breakdown happens. Let us say I increase the pressure. If I increase the pressure, my density will increase, which means I will have a larger number of particles in that gas. In the same volume, I'll have a larger number of particles. It's like having more people in a room. If you have more people in a room and the people are moving around, what will happen is they will tend to collide more and more with each other. And as they tend to collide more and more, which more and more with each other, which means we will have more ionizing collisions. But if they collide very often, the mean free path is reduced. And therefore, in between collisions, they will not be accelerated sufficiently for them to acquire. The, when the electrons move in the field, they acquire energy from the field. So they acquire energy during their mean free path and they expend their energy during the collisions. If between two collisions, the minimum, the mean free path is small, they will not be able, these particles will not be able to acquire enough energy from the electric field to be able to have ionizing collision. They will have collisions, but they will not have ionizing collisions and the number of ionizing collisions will reduce. And therefore you will need a higher voltage so that the collisions, so that they can acquire higher energy even with that reduced mean free path and they can cause ionizing collisions. If you, on the other hand, come to the left of the curve, which means you're reducing the pressure, the mean free path increases, the particles do acquire sufficient energy, but the number of collisions reduced. So as a result, again, you have the number of ionizing collisions reduced, number of ionizations reduced because number of collisions reduced when the pressure reduces. When the pressure increases, you have more collisions, but you do not necessarily have more ionizing collisions. So both sides of the graph, both sides of this VB min, you have fewer ionizations and you need higher voltages or a higher applied field for the same breakdown to happen. Of course, I have tried to explain this by keeping D fixed. It is actually a function of the product of pressure into distance. So this is Pasteur's law, which tells me that there is a minimum sparking potential for every gas, and that minimum sparking potential happens at a particular optimum product of pressure into distance.